Hi folks, Christy from Shark Pixel here. I am thrilled to be bringing you some of the newest features that have just been released into Adobe Photoshop, but it is the beta. So you definitely want to make sure you have downloaded that. In this video, we are going to be talking about complete background swap, background generation from scratch, just with a sentence. It's gonna be mind blowing. And I cannot wait for you to see what is possible. But in order to play around with these features, you are going to have to download the Photoshop beta. It is a public beta, so you can download it. Anyone can download it. You're gonna start in your Creative Cloud app. You're gonna go over to the left-hand side to where you see beta apps. You're gonna choose the Photoshop beta. You are either going to download it or update it. The version that you're looking for is 24.6. That is the version of the beta that you need in order to play around with all of these amazing new features. I am filming four videos and releasing them all today, so make sure you check all four of them out on the biggest new advancements that are coming out in the beta, so make sure you check them all out. So let's get started. We have this image of a mermaid here, and you can see that I photographed this in a pool, okay? So we've, um, we are in the beta here, you can see that. I'm going to just do a quick uh, merge visible, shift option, command E. I do have the selection already created for me. And what we're going to do now is we're going to come up to our contextual taskbar. Now, if you see this, if it's not pinned, it's going to get a little bit annoying because it's gonna, it's gonna follow your mouse around and anywhere where you have a selection, it's gonna follow you around. So if you see this contextual taskbar, just go ahead, go into the three dots menu and you're going to choose to pin the bar location. Okay, that's gonna keep it out of your way, keep it from bouncing around a little bit. If you don't see your contextual task bar for any reason, you can go up into the, your window menu and you can scroll down to the bottom and there you're gonna see your contextual task bar. I was calling it contextual, contextual menu bar, say that five times fast, but it is a task bar instead. Okay, so now that we have this um, selection created, we're gonna invert this selection because we want the selection to be of our background. So remember, in the other videos, I have mentioned what the contextual taskbar is. It's a grouping of the logical next steps after you do a certain step in Photoshop. So for this, we selected the subject. So, the next logical step for the selecting of a subject would be to do something like invert your selection or refine mask and see. So if we look up in here in our taskbar, you can see some of those options. You could fill the selection. You could create an adjustment layer with a mask of this selection. You could just create a regular mask. You could transform. You could invert the selection, which is what I want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and click that, which is going to invert my selection for me. It's just your one-stop shop of whatever your next steps are going to be. That's kind of what the contextual taskbar is for me. All right, so now that I have that done, I'm going to come in to the area where it says generative fill. And what I'm gonna do is put in some, um, some, a prompt for what I would like the background to look like. So you can see that this was photographed in a pool. Um, it was one of, one of my first underwater shoots that I did but I would like to put this in the ocean. So what I'm going to do is put in shallow, um, realistic, shallow ocean floor with white sand, front lighting, and ocean reflection on top. Okay, now that I have my prompt inputted, what I can do is go ahead and choose generate, okay? Now, what is going to happen now is Photoshop is going to beam this image up to the cloud. And so you do have to be connected to Wi-Fi for this to happen. 
It's going to reference the image. It's going to read the entire image. It's going to look at the lighting conditions. It's going to look at the contrast, the color, the visibility, and it's going to give me three different versions of what it thinks it wants my image to look like. And so here are the three different versions that it gave me. Um, and so that's pretty close to what the ocean might look like. Now it's not necessarily sunny. I wouldn't call that white sand, right? I did put in white sand. But what's actually happening is that it's referencing what's actually going on in the image to get you a better result. So it might, it, it might take some information from your prompt, but it might also take some information from the attributes in the image itself. I'm gonna just choose generate one more time See if I can get anything that I think is closer or better. But I really do like the shadows in this one that we were able to get. All right, there's one, there's two, and there's three. So they're getting me close. They're not getting me 100% of the way there, but they are getting me better than a pool, right? So let me show you a different option a different image that I have here. I'm gonna start by selecting subject like I did before. And now again, what I would like to do is invert that selection so that it is the background because we're gonna be changing the background completely. So again, I can just come to my contextual taskbar and choose invert right there. Now, what I would like to do is I might like to come in here and maybe just add or subtract and I've got my um, object selection tool so let's turn that off. So I have my lasso tool. I'm going to just um, subtract some of this grass from the, um, from the selection. Okay, Remember we have our background selected at the moment. Okay, So now that we have the background selected um, come in here and make sure that her nose doesn't get cut off. All right, so now that we have the background selected, I can go ahead and just input a prompt that's going to completely change the background for me. So I've got my generative fill little box in the contextual taskbar. All right, and we're going to put in, let's put in grassy hill in the foreground with medieval castle on rocky mountain in the background, cloudy, stormy, ominous weather. And let's see what we got, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and choose generate. And so while this is going on, I'm gonna make sure that I let you know I am releasing four videos today. If this is the first one that you're watching, go ahead and watch the other three. They're all announcements on new features that Photoshop is announcing today. So you're going to want to check them all out and go ahead and give me a little bit of a comment below on what your favorite new feature is. All right, so we've had our time to get the generation um, going and this is looking good. I'm, I'm pretty happy with the three castles that I've gotten. I do see just one little thing here. I want to make sure that I clean up this area here where it blended the uh, subject and the background together. So I'm gonna go back to my, um, my original. I'm gonna choose select subject. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, copy those pixels. I'll turn on my generative AI layer and then I'm going to paste the um, the initial select subject over the one, it was the edges that were getting a little bit wonky. Okay, so after we did that, I really love this castle that I see in the background. I think it looks really great and I'm happy with those results. I would like to maybe come in to this area. I'm not exactly sure what this is. I can go ahead and put a lasso around that I'm going to choose generative fill, but this is a promptless generative fill. And what that means is it's just going to remove whatever I find. So if I hit generative fill 
and then without putting in any prompt, I hit generate. It's gonna go ahead and read the file over again, see what that is and try and fix it. And so, yeah, I'm not exactly sure what that is in the background, but I would kind of like it removed. So let's see if that works. All right, and that looks good. While you are with me, I want to ask you to like and subscribe to this channel if you want to be one of the first people to know what's coming out in the next versions. Lastly, what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna use my crop tool. I'm gonna to pull out the crop a little bit and work on this um, framing just a little bit. So we'll pull out that crop. I'm gonna use my rectangular marquee tool, make a selection around this area here. I'm just gonna choose generative fill and then choose generate. Okay, I'm not putting in a prompt at all. So this is promptless and it is using generative fill within Photoshop to make those changes. So lastly, just wanted to mention my ebook. If you are a photographer or a portrait photographer, please check this ebook out. It's over 200 pages, my 20 best Photoshop tips, and it is definitely worth a read. These are my game-changing tips that I think every photographer should know. And we are back. We have three different variations that were created by the AI. And honestly, I love all three. <laughs> I can't believe how good this technology is getting. And it hasn't even been tweaked by all you great artists out there. The way that you can input your um, ideas of whether something was good or bad is up in your contextual taskbar right here. After you go through your three changes, we've got our three options here. You can change them again in the properties area or you can change them up here in the contextual taskbar, all right? I think I like number two. Um, I think that that gives good leading lines. If you like or dislike the result, go ahead and choose that. If you think it's inappropriate, you can go ahead and report it right there. So this is a little bit of outcropping, right? Generative um, fill outcropping, a little bit of changing the background completely using just a text prompt. And we did a little bit of promptless removal using generative fill as well. So this is a three for one. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Like, subscribe, and share if you wanna get the word out about these new amazing Adobe Photoshop AI features.